So this screencast is on how to use the water tables and uh, more importantly how to select which water table you'd like to use or that you should use to solve your problems. And the first thing to, to look at is the different tables that we've got. The first is uh, the saturated water temperature table. And what this table does is it organizes the data by particular temperatures. So if you knew a temperature, for example, you knew you were at 30 degrees C, you could look over at this point and find the saturated pressure and all the different, uh, different properties, such as specific volume, internal energy, enthalpy, and entropy. The second table is the saturated water table, but organized by pressure. And in this case, instead of temperature in the first column, they have the pressure in kilopascal. So we've got 1 kilopascal, 10 kilopascal, for example, 75 kilopascal, and even up to uh, 101.3 kilopascal, which is one atmosphere. It's important to recognize that these two tables, the saturated temperature and pressure tables, they contain the same information, but they're just organized a little bit differently. And for example, if the pressure was at 20 kilopascal, this is where the line that we would read off of on the saturated water, the pressure table, and we could gather all of these data based on a pressure of 20 kilopascal. And if we just look at the temperature, 60.06 degrees C, the saturation temperature of that pressure, I can go back to the saturated temperature table, saturated water temperature table, and in this case look down the second column and I'll get real close to 20 degrees, uh, or I'm sorry, 20 kilopascal, and again we see a saturation temperature of about 60 degrees C. So they're just organized to find the properties that you want a little bit more conveniently. And what you'll find are all these numbers in this row will be very similar to the row that I showed you in the, uh, the pressure table. There's a lot of information in each of these tables. The first would be the, um, the specific volume in cubic meters per kilogram, the internal energy, or U, the variable U, in kilojoules per kilogram, the enthalpy, or variable H, again in kilojoules per kilogram, and entropy, the variable S, in kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And each one of these things has similar trends. And if, I, uh, if we focus on internal energy for the moment, what we'll find is that there are values for saturated liquid in saturated vapor and the tables use the notation a saturated liquid and for some reason they're using the subscript F for a saturated liquid and I tend to think of it um, even though a vapor and a liquid are both fluids they're using the notation uh, F which I, it might stand for fluid and for the saturated vapor they use a subscript uh, subscript G which I think stands for the gas so we've got quality uh, conditions for both saturated liquid and saturated vapor in this middle column the evaporation column it's simply the difference between the internal energy of the vapor minus the internal energy of the fluid itself so you'll find that this column here is just redundant so, for example, if we use this value of 2442.7 and subtracted 209.33, we would come up with this value in the middle of 2233.4. And it might be a little bit more obvious, this first one, 2374.9 minus 0, is equal to 2374.9, the difference between those two. So for our first problem, let's try to identify the state or all the properties with a uh, fluid uh, water at 200 kilopascal and a temperature of 300 degrees C. So we need to locate it. We've got a number of tables to, to try and figure this out. But let's go back to the saturated water, the pressure table, and we'll identify, I'll look at the pressure column, and I'm going to keep going down until I find 200 kilopascal at the bottom. So I'll highlight, here's 200 200 kilopascal at the bottom, it has a saturation temperature of 120.21 degrees C. But the temperature we're after is 300 degrees C. So if this was a saturated liquid, uh, its temperature would be 120.21, but the temperature we're dealing with is much greater than that. And that suggests that this is actually, the state of this system is actually a superheated vapor. And to get information on that, we'll go through the, the superheated water tables. And I'm going to look. Each, uh, the organization of these tables, there are subtables, and each one of these tables will give you different pressures, and these are in megapascal. So, for example, here's a pressure at 50 kilopascal. This is 100 kilopascal, and if I keep coming down, this is the pressure that we're after. This is 0.2 megapascal, or 200 kilopascal. And if I scroll back up, 
this first column is the temperature in degrees C. So let's come back down 200 kilopascal and a temperature of 300 degrees C. All the information that I want now is on this line. And each of these columns represents, in this case, the specific volume, the internal energy, the enthalpy, and the entropy of this superheated water. So I've got all the information that I need right there. And this is indeed uh, superheated water, and these are the uh, data that we can work with. Now one thing you'll note on these uh, superheated water tables are all these temperatures in parentheses. And what these stand for are the saturation temperature at a pressure of 200 kilopascal. And we could read off, these, this, is, uh, this first row is, are the variables at the saturation temperature. So these are saturated vapor, uh, quantities for saturated vapor. And if I came back, let's go back, let's compare this, the 200 kilopascal, 120.21 degrees C. We'll go back to the saturated uh, water, the pressure table, and here my pressure in kilopascal again, I'll come down and uh, 200 kilopascal, this is redundant information, but it has, it does have a temperature of 120.21 degrees C. And we'll find that the value, here's a specific volume of the vapor, here's the internal energy of the vapor, the enthalpy of the vapor, and the entropy of the vapor, we ought to find that these values, if we compare them, will be uh, the same between both tables. So for example, the specific volume of the vapor, we would expect 0.88578 cubic meters per kilogram. And if I scroll back down, and we look under our uh, original data here, here's the saturation condition, and again, I do see this 0.88578 cubic meters per kilogram. So the data are redundant, but they're just different ways to look them up. And one thing you'll find in these tables is that, that there'll be missing rows. So for example, all these data are missing, and the reason they're missing is because for a pressure of uh, 100 kilopascal, or 0.1 megapascal, the saturation temperature is 99.61 degrees C. So it has to be greater than 99.61 degrees C for it to be a superheated, uh, for the water to be superheated and to be relevant to this table. But this first column is only at a temperature of 50 degrees C, so it doesn't, uh, it would be, uh, there are no data under those conditions for superheated water. Let's do another problem where we're looking at uh, water at 100 degrees C and a pressure of 50 kilopascal. We want to find out the properties of the water under these conditions. So again, let's start out, since I know the temperature is 100 degrees C, let's start out by looking at the saturated water, the temperature table, and I'll look down the temperature column until I find 100 degrees C. And I know at 100 degrees C, it has a saturation pressure of 101.42 kilopascal. However, in this case, we're looking at a pressure that's only 50 kilopascal. And you can think of this, um, it is a superheated vapor, but you might think of it this way, in that the pressure, if it's less than 101.42 kilopascal, it doesn't have enough pressure to effectively push the vapor into the liquid phase. So the pressure is too low, and in this case, we are again a superheated, uh, superheated vapor. So let's find out in the superheated vapor tables, we want a temperature of 100 degrees C and a pressure of 50 kilopascal. So let's look down. Here's my a pressure of 50 kilopascal. In this case, it's 0.05 megapascal. And our temperature of 100 degrees C is indeed larger than the saturation temperature, which also indicates that this is a superheated, a superheated vapor. So let's go over here. We'll look at 100 degrees C and under this condition, these are all the properties that we need for this superheated vapor. So under these conditions, these are the, the specific volume, internal energy, enthalpy, and enthalpy, or entropy that we would look up for, for this system. So finally, let's do a problem in which the pressure is 100 kilopascal, and the internal energy is, the specific internal energy is 4,000 kilojoules per kilogram. And we want to use these two pieces of information to find out the temperature of our system. So let's start. We know it's a pressure of 100 kilopascal. And let's start at the saturated water, the pressure table. So I'll scroll down. Here's the pressure table. And I'm looking at the first column. I'll come down. Here's 100 kilopascal. So I know the information it might be on this row. And if I scroll back up slightly, I've got the internal energy here of the saturated liquid is this 417.40. Here's 25.05. 5.6, and this middle column is the difference between the two. 
But what we see is that we're interested in, in internal energy of 4,000 kilojoules per kilogram. And that's even greater than the internal energy of the vapor. So that suggests the internal energy, uh, because it's larger than that, that it's actually a superheated vapor. It contains more internal energy than even saturated vapor. So that indicates that we ought to go to the superheated uh, vapor table. So let's do that. We're going to go to the superheated water uh, tables, and we're going to look for a pressure of 100 kilopascal, or in this case, 0.1 megapascal. And let's examine the internal energy under this state. And I'm looking, I'm coming, I'm scrolling, looking down the column, I'm looking for something. We're looking for 4,000 kilojoules per kilogram. And where I see it, I see here something a little bit less than 4,000, something a little bit above 4,000. And the two temperatures for these is somewhere between 900 and 1,000 degrees C. And what you would find if you interpolated between these two values, you would find that the temperature is actually about 973 degrees C.